so many meetings are happening virtually and so many are happening via Zoom. Some of my friends have asked me, hey, how are you making your videos and your magic shows kind of look professional? And the answer is I've been using open broadcaster software. My friend Louis Fox first mentioned it to me. I went online, I downloaded it. It's free, obsproject.com. And I wanna give you kind of a brief overview of what it is, what the features are, and then if you're interested, you can go online and there's tons of tutorials. This is not a, this is not a how to, it's just, hey, these are some of the things you can do with it. Once you download it, you can't use OBS and immediately use it in Zoom. There are two kind of important things that you need to do. <laughs> you need to download a virtual camera. This is free, but you start the virtual camera in OBS and then you go into Zoom and rather, uh, in Zoom you can choose your video source and usually you probably choose your web camera or your capture card if you have a capture card. But instead you're gonna choose this virtual camera and that gets the video from OBS into Zoom. Then you're gonna do the same thing for your audio. You're gonna download these virtual audio cables, same thing in Zoom, rather than choosing your microphone or your web camera or your computer audio for the sound, you're gonna choose this virtual audio cable and that gets the sound from OBS into Zoom. A couple other things you're gonna want if, uh, for a more professional video setup and that is you're gonna to wanna to use a nice camera like this. You're gonna need a video capture card, most likely to get the HDMI signal from your camera into your computer. The HDMI cable coming out of your camera is not recognized as a web camera to your computer. So that's why you need this capture card. Fortunately, the prices have come way down. When I bought my capture card that I installed in my computer, it was like $150. Now you can buy them for 20 bucks. I don't know if it's the same quality or not. Also make sure that your camera is supported. Sometimes cameras, like I've got a video camera, that when I try and use it, it says standby or recording or it shows the battery level on it. So it's not very good for a web camera. So do some research before you buy a, a camera. Another thing that I'm using, because I'm using multiple cameras, when I do my shows, I have an overhead camera, I've got a main camera. Sometimes I use a third camera if I'm doing more of a stand-up show. And in that case, I've got a switcher. In fact, I'm gonna show you what my video setup looks like. This is the switcher, and I can switch between this camera and my overhead camera just by clicking a button here. I also have a large monitor so that I can have OBS full screen and zoom full screen when I'm doing that. Or if you're not broadcasting to Zoom, you might be broadcasting to Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Twitch or whatever. And that's another nice thing. Once you've learned how to use OBS, you can stream to other platforms. This would be a great time. I'm gonna switch over and show you what the OBS software looks like. When you open OBS, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna, just gonna see big black screens. You're gonna be making scenes and then adding sources to the scenes. So for instance, when I click on Sony Cam, my main camera shows up. That's because as the source, I chose the video, the HDMI capture card, which is right here. Now other sources might be text like this, right here. It could be graphics overlaid. In that case, this image four, those are my graphics. Here in the sources, if I click the little eyeball, I can make those invisible if I want. I can also click and drag those anywhere I want on the screen. I can grab the handles and resize them. So it's really, it's really slick and pretty easy to use. Video. A lot of times people ask, how do you integrate recorded video with live video? And with OBS, it's super simple. When I click on this button, it's gonna play video. So suddenly, you can share video with other viewers on Zoom even if you haven't been given permission to share your desktop. You can do it with OBS. Oh, then the next important thing, huge tip, over to the right, you'll see settings. 
set hotkeys right here. I'm going to scroll down and show you here by my Sony camera. I have switched to scene set to one. So my hotkey is number one on my keypad. Number three is the Sony cam plus social media. So I'm going to exit out of this. If I just take my finger and I hit button three, it brings up those graphics. If I hit button one, it takes the graphics down, just goes to my regular camera. Now, the next really cool thing is this, the Stream Deck. And I'm going to switch to, uh, I'm going to use the Stream Deck to show you how it works. When I hit this button, it's going to switch to my overhead camera. And then I'm going to, oh wait, there, okay. This is what it looks like. Basically, these are all hotkeys, but they're user selectable and I can name it exactly what it does. So for instance, if I wanted to play a video file, I just touch this. Or if I want to do, let's go back to the overhead camera. If I wanted to play a sound effect, I can go to this page and I hit this. So this thing, super valuable. Uh, it's, it's made a huge different in my, difference in my streams. And then another thing that I just recently learned is that they have foot pedals. So now you can change, you can set your hotkeys for foot pedals. You just step and it can change your camera. It can bring up graphics. So there are a lot of possibilities with OBS. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Or if you need to hire me as a consultant, I could probably even do that. Thanks for watching.